Hey guys, this is part two of a three-part series on how to install a security system, how to program it, and then the third one will be on how to connect it into a home automation engine. Uh, this particular episode will focus on ELK and ELK RP. Uh, part one was uh, valid no matter what kind of security panel you have. Uh, this one is only going to be uh, relevant to you if you have an ELK. Uh, so let's take a look. So this is ELK RP. This is not my ELK RP. The ELK actually comes with some sample data, so I've opened up one of those sample data elements. Uh, here's the screen layout. Uh, main menu is on the left-hand side. Obviously, these standard uh, things up here. And you can do all this work offline and then hit the little connection and go to uh, connection network, and that's where it'll sync up with your actual panel. Uh, account details, for the most part, this is just static information, but you do need to type in your port. Uh, you can have a, an access code, so you can punch that in here. This is how you get into the Ethernet setup. Um, that's the important stuff. Um, under, so now moving on, uh, the first thing you want to do is set up an area. Um, you don't need multiple areas. You're not going to arm your first floor and your second floor separately unless you're a commercial building. And if you're a commercial building, what are you doing watching YouTube? Um, so let's just stick with one area. Um, now you got multiple users. You can have everybody can have their own user, mom and dad, or partner one, partner two can have their own um, arm disarm code, which is useful because then my system texts me with who's coming and going. <clears throat> so you want to have that person level um, identification. You give your kids either one code or each of them could have their own code. Uh, you can actually have a duress, a home invasion type situation where. Uh, you can have the security company, not, you know, the alarm doesn't sound, but the security company immediately rolls the police because there's a, a situation. That's pretty nifty. Um, keypads, um, usually one in the front, one in the back. And so you can have um, different settings for each of those. This, however, is the meat of the matter. This is what you all have been waiting for. Uh, zones, uh, those circuits I, have, I just walked you through in part one of the video. Um, in the main board, like I said, you're going to have 16, and so they populated with all this stuff. Um, burglary entry exit means this is where you're going to walk into and out of the house, so don't sound the alarm immediately. Um, burglary uh, burglar interior or perimeter instant. Perimeter instant means sound it the, the second this window or door is open. Um, you could even have things like, um, they have, where is it here? A burglar interior follower. So things like a motion detector that's pointed at your front door, uh, you could set it up as a follower zone, and that way it knows, hey, look, if you disarm, you know, you open the front door, well, that's the entry exit, and then the follower means um, that'll if uh, that gets tripped before the alarm is disabled, don't trip the alarm yet. Um, otherwise, uh, you're going to want to trip the alarm. Um, you, and this is where you're going to set up a variety of different options. Is it a normally open, normally closed, the end of line stuff? Uh, voice, uh, what do you want to have the security panel announce uh, upon violation? Chime, every time uh, some security systems you may have noticed, if you open or close a window, the thing chimes. You don't have to have that on every single door or window. You can uh, set that up for some of them. Uh, maybe you want to let this zone be bypassable. So you want to have a window because it's hot at night and you want to leave that window open. Uh, so you want to be able to bypass that window, but your front door shouldn't be able to get bypassed because you shouldn't be leaving your front door open or whatever you want to do. So this is where you define all your zones. Um, if you take a look underneath the definition, there's a ton of different definitions in here. Um, you have fire, you can have non-alarm. Uh, so let's say you want to put a sensor on your driveway gate. Uh, so like I do, it texts me if the driveway gate has been opened or closed on uh, when the system is in armed state or armed away mode. So that's where you could set these things up. Um, and there's a bunch of other different options. Uh, that it's, I can't go through them all in this video, but this is really just to give you an example anyhow. Um, so that's the hardware. If you have multiple expanders, you'll uh, see the additional expanders in here. If you have anything set up, um, it'll be set up as, as wireless in there. Okay, so that's the zones in a turbo amount of time. Um, once you have these zones set up, um, you're going to want to, you can do some pretty cool things. Well, I'm sorry, let's go to telephones. Telephones, who are you going to call um, other than Ghostbusters to uh, report a, a, an alarm situation? So this is where you set that up and you have account numbers. You're going to get the phone number from, you know, next alarm. You punch their number into here. Um, you got a bunch of different codes that you're going to want to type in. This is information you'd get from next alarm. I'm not going to go through that here because it's, it's pretty complicated. Um, and then finally, the ELK panel itself actually has the ability to do some basic automation. 
And actually, some people are doing more than basic um, automation. So you can have uh, rules is is the key thing. There's a bunch of different sections here. I'm not. I don't. I think it's going to be too detailed to get into that in in this video. This is really just meant to give you a high level. But you can do things like, hey, you know, whenever any burglar alarm comes on, any area turns on, if you have your lights hooked in, because the elk has the ability to directly control lights, uh, you can flash some uh, lights. Um, you can have other things, and it's pretty easy. You just click the button, you know, whenever, you know, uh, oops, what I do? You know, whenever this zone changes, right, um, then you can, uh, let's just pick that one, then you can do a bunch of different things. You can send emails, you can uh, beep the keypad, right, you can deal with the lighting, um, you can do um, a bunch of different things here. So that's how that works. Um, one thing that you could do, for example, is, um, let me cancel out of here and start this again. Um, you could say, look, whenever it's a certain time, whenever or, you know, at sunset, turn the chime off. Or at 8 p.m., uh, turn the chime off because your kids are sleeping. And then at 8 a.m., so you can say, you know, whatever it is. And then, then where's the chime in here? Uh, chime is here somewhere. Oh, gosh. Where'd it go? Um, it's here somewhere. Trust me. Um, oh, yeah, enable disable chime. Then you can set chime off, you can set chime on. That's obviously a nit little thing. You can do some pretty complicated um, rules just within the uh, Elk RP. Uh, you will see it is all text based. It's uh, it's not really that much of a GUI. So you get more than 8, 10, 15. Um, this list is going to get pretty long. Um, this is where what I personally chose to do is put a home automation engine sitting on top of that. And I have, I would say, 99% of my rules um, in the home automation engine and not in Elk. I got a couple of things in the Elk. Um, you could do things also if you have um, outputs uh, or like relays. So you could turn outputs on and off. So this guy's got a yard sprinkler, right? Um, all this stuff is on your panel, which means no computer is needed. You don't even need Linux, right? This is all sitting within the Elk panel. Um, once you get all this stuff set up, then you just press this connection, you know, connection to the network. I'm not going to click it because it ain't going to work because I didn't put in my real IP address. Um, but that is a overview of the Elk RP software um, in turbo fashion. If you have any questions, um, feel free to put, uh, ping in the comments or in the um, uh, forum link that I'll have on there. Uh, if not, uh, let's go on then to part three, which is how would you layer a home automation engine on top of that? Um, if you're not interested in that, thanks for watching.